Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spoiler Warning Podcast. This is review number 743 with our review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. I'm Christopher Schneezy. And I'm Stephen Miller. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Spoiler Warning Podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week in the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest films coming to a theater near you. Um, we're, we're powering through, we're getting back to it, we're dropping episodes like uh, turtles are dropping bad guys, and um, mm-hmm. we're here to talk about this week's uh, you know big release, I guess, apparently. Um, I- I'll be honest, I was kind of seeing this movie on a whim. I was not expecting a lot i was just gonna see it and it's not until like now that i'm actually hearing it's getting reviewed pretty well and stuff now did you see trailers you must have because you've been to alamo in the months leading up to this i've definitely seen trailers um but even watching the trailers i was kind of just like oh they're making another turtles movie and i wasn't really like thinking about was i going to see this film or not you know it was kind of like a thing where it's like oh shit that's this week i guess i'm seeing it yeah yeah because i don't think it's reviews that drew me to it too i think i saw the trailer around the time i had watched across the spider verse and i think the animation style just made me assume it was going to be very well reviewed i don't know maybe that's a a (laughs) dumb assumption on my part but in my head it was like a foregone conclusion that this was going to be a movie to watch and i don't even remember any ninja turtles lore like i'm sure i had action figures as a kid i'm sure i like watched cartoons and played with them or did something or other but i am I didn't go in with any real nostalgia for the turtles. It was just like the voice cast seemed amazing. The animation style seemed fun. And I was like, hell yeah, of course I'm seeing turtles. And then I tried to get Joanna to go with me. And she's like, no, I don't want to go to Ninja Turtles. <laughs> why? What are you, you know, why would I do that? Why would you assume that I want to go to this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I was surprised. Lots of people were, were showing up to see this. Um, and I, I might actually have a little story about uh, a surprising guest <laughs> that I got to experience at this movie theater. Um, so, you know, it's a good transition, Stephen, into my favorite segment of the show, which is try to tell a story about the audience, which I'm sure does not connect with anybody listening to this show. Of course, the, the Spence Memorial segment. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I went and saw this at Alamo, you know, picked a nice brunch screening, was getting ready to sit down. And, uh, you know, I, I took the, the special secret companion seats down in that front little area, you yep. know, like nice getting ready to hang out in theater five and, you know, have a nice experience. Um, exactly where I sat two nights earlier. Nice. Um, so, you know, it's, it's at that moment where it's, it's like darker, but it's not yet ready for the movie to start. And this man, uh, comes strolling in. And when I say strolling in, I mean like, he had like a stroll to him. He was dressed a little bit like, um, uh, you know, who, who's the dad from season two of White Lotus? Um, the one who played like Christopher in uh, uh, Michael Imperioli. Yeah. Yeah. So he was basically dressed like the way he would dress in that show. He had like the white fedora <laughs> on. Mm-hmm. He had like a white pants and he had just like a nice pinstripe bluish maybe shirt. And he comes like kind of like just jaunting in, you know, like a little bit older man, like <laughs> maybe had had a few cocktails at the Baron Bowl or whatever the hell the bar's called. Um, I wish this were a video podcast because you're doing just a little <laughs> jaunt, but it's communicating so much <laughs> visually. <laughs> Yeah, so he comes in and he does this like whip a hand around thing and he points to the seat to the left of me. And I want you all to... to imagine like jazz hands <laughs> while Christopher's walking it's... because that's the vibe that he's giving. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely jazz hands. So and also, you know, I like to get a popcorn in the theater, but the the bowl of popcorn at an Alamo screening is pretty big. So I will mm-hmm. only get it if I know I'm the only person sharing that table or if Jamie or somebody else is my companion then I'm like, it's okay for me to take up half the table with this bowl of popcorn. So I'll usually wait to the last second to order my bowl of popcorn. So right before this guy walked in, I had like checked the seats, made sure nobody booked around me, ordered my bowl of popcorn, and it hasn't arrived yet. But this guy comes in, he's doing his jazz hands, and he points the seat to the left, points the seat to the right. And then he kind of walks past the table towards the seat that's to my right, which usually is a space reserved for you know, a wheelchair. Um, but they had yeah. already brought all the seats out. So I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, mm-hmm. So he kind of like motions that way. And I just kind of like, you know, wave them on in. <laughs> because <laughs> because I don't I don't know what he's doing. I'm not going to have a conversation about which side he's. I'm like, go for it. You're already yeah, on this the side of the table. Warm, bro. <laughs> yeah. So he sits down and I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, is that his seat? Or did he just stroll in and he's hanging out? And I was like, oh, man, now my popcorn's going to come. Now I got to do this dance and shove all my sh- stuff to the side to keep it away. But you have two tables. 
So is is there something on the other side that's also keeping? No, no, you? no. He's sitting in the seat that would share with my table. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So I he, see. he is sitting in a seat they have brought in, which would normally be reserved for like a wheelchair. Um, so you only have the one companion seat, not the other companion seat. Too. Oh yeah, I, I didn't get like, both seats. You didn't book thinking someone else was going to come. Okay. No, no, no. I'm I'm just there. You're so he's sitting next to me. <laughs> the movie's it's about to go into trailer mode, right? And I'm like, okay, maybe the waitress will come by and check it. You know, hey, welcome to Alamo. Can I see your tickets? The whole the whole song and dance. Um, she comes by, but she's carrying waters for another table. Comes by again, carrying waters in a different direction, not checking mm -hmm. anything. I'm like, all right, it's fine. So we, uh, <laughs> the trailer start and I'm sitting there. I'm like, it's cool. Everything's fine. <laughs> Far way through like the second trailer, maybe this man leans over to me and he goes, where did your mother go? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I look at him and I go, um, and then he goes, what? <laughs> and he does what? this sudden double take and he goes, you look just like, and then he like panics and looks around and I'm like, what seat? <laughs> Do you, are you supposed to be in? <laughs> and then he gets up and starts walking down, looking at the face of every person in the seats next to him till he finally finds a row. He leans in, he takes off his hat, leans into somebody who is, I don't know, his son, his son-in-law. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the fact that he said, where did your, I, I guess, you know, an older father might say, where did your mother, like his wife, you know, I, I couldn't tell whether it was like. See, I'm, I'm going to say he's dating the mother of the person that he yeah. was looking for. That, that was kind of my assumption. But, like, also the idea that he would sit on one side of me and my mom would sit on the other. <laughs> it, <sounds, laughs> it just sounds weird. But, like, he, he does this look. He, 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 reaches, he leans in and talks to this guy. This guy kind of leans forward and looks over at me. And then the dad just gives me, like, the finger guns. <laughs> Wow, what a twist. His behavior it, makes so much more sense now, though, where he's like, because he's asking which seat to take because yeah, yeah. he assumes all three are you. And he's like, hey, yeah. where do you want me, bud? Which is like very I'm dating your mom energy. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's just it, like what was, what was so funny to me is because now I feel bad because I led him astray. But I was mm -hmm. just like, I didn't want to have an awkward, weird, like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Like, how am I supposed to yeah. know what his intentions were? And like, in my head, I was like, is he like partway through? I was like, man. Like, after he had moved back to his seat, I was like, there's not a single world in which that popcorn wouldn't have arrived where he would have just dug in. <laughs> because, <laughs> because he thinks I'm, I'm... I, That's where I thought the story was going. I I've, I've somehow knew from the moment you showed his jaunty demeanor walking in and his jazz hands and everything, I knew he was digging into your popcorn. I Like, I couldn't yeah. wait for that. <laughs> but then... I, I know the interaction probably only lasted, like, two seconds, but... Where where'd your mother go is such a creepy thing for a stranger <laughs> to say. It's yeah, it just uh it was an amazing it was an amazing moment. Wow. <laughs> wow. That uh I'm not even gonna tell the story of me eating a pepperoni and pickle pizza now because it just has no comparison to what you experienced at the Alamo. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to text you immediately, but the trailers were already going, and I know that technically that's an okay time to text, I guess. Uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I, I couldn't do it. I was, uh, I was already committed. The lights were down, so. I respect it. I'm glad you saved it for, for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope, I hope for everybody listening, you enjoyed that story as much as Steven and I did. Um, but, uh, you know, it just it had to be, I've been, I've been waiting all weekend to, or I guess all week <laughs> uh, I mean, to tell the story. And an aspect of that, too, is for people who don't know the Alamo Draft House, it, it is like an extremely reserved seat in advance place. Like, yeah. seat, table, menu, someone has pre swiped a card for you. Like, the idea of walking in not knowing where your seat is already seems like complete ridiculous behavior to me showing up there, which makes sense if, like, again, I, canonically, he is dating this kid's mom. Um, yeah. And the, the cool younger person is like, hey, I know this cool theater in the city. Why don't you come hang out with me and go see it? And then he's like, yeah, whatever you say, kid. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm hip. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get laid that's... later tonight while you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is, in what world is a, 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 an adult man my age taking his hip parents to go watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> That is true. And so the guy who he did come up to, because in my head, part of what is funny about this is I'm imagining he mistook you for like a 17 year old. <laughs> I mean, that's possible, too. But still, what 17? Like, 
a parent can drop their 17 year old kid off at an Alamo draft house and they can go watch a movie on their own, right? Oh, okay. So backstory in my head, the kid lives up here and the parents do not. And the parents are like visiting or on a trip to mm. San Francisco or something. And this is the like <laughs> one of the cool things to do in the city is like, hey, let's go to this movie theater where they serve beer at your seat. Um, yeah, you would I, like the, that, wouldn't you, uh, Robert? That's his name. <laughs> I think. I, I also think that the parents are definitely not just visiting the city, but they're also leaving on a cruise that leaves from the Ooh, city. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely a princess cruise off the pier the next morning. <laughs> yeah, it, it all it all makes sense now. Um, mm -hmm. All I know is, as soon as I got past that like mid credit sequence, I booked it out of there because I didn't want the weird inter interaction where the guy was like, "Why did you let me sit next to you?" <sighs> I love it. <laughs> well, maybe they'll tell this story at the parents' uh, eventual wedding when they get. <laughs> you know, remarried. they're telling on the cruise right now while they're watching oh, yeah. another movie and drinking, but on a screen that's like 480p. That's you know, 300 feet wide. But the guy's also telling it to his soon-to-be son-in-law, thinking he's a stranger. <laughs> yeah, he's horribly sunburned and his face is red because he's had like 20 coronas that day. I can see it all. <laughs> Oh, man. <clears throat> All right. Well, I sure hope people enjoyed the story because we're already 12 minutes into this episode. <laughs> so what do you say, Stephen? We, we, we stop Dilly Dallying and we jump in to our review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Let's do it. All right. Let's play that trailer and then bring that review. Boys, where have you been? <laughs> we're just running errands. That's it? Really sorry, Splinter. Some of the guys wanted to get pizza, and I tried to talk them out of it. Leo! You ratted us out. Hey, don't use that word that way. I mean, it's 2023. Sorry, right Dad. Here. <laughs> hey, guys, if we weren't monsters that were shunned by society and we could do what we wanted, ah! what would you guys do? Go to high school. Maybe get a girlfriend. Can you imagine that? Not likely. Ah! Yes, you can. Yes, you can. This is insane. Turtles, mutant, karate teens. I want to know everything about you. Our dad is definitely not a giant rat. That makes me feel like he's a rat. Police are baffled by the recent crime wave led by a super fly. Nobody's ever seen his face. Why? Because he kills everyone who does. Whoa. Cool. No, not cool. A bit cool. Can I change it? We take out super fun, and then everyone will think we're cool. They'll accept us. Can I change it? He's making a deal tonight under the Brooklyn Bridge. Can I change it? What the? Y'all some little tortoises, huh? I can't believe there are other mutants. You want to roll with us? Oh. Humans are never going to like us. So we're going to let the mutants rule the earth. People's they got to go. Okay, um, sort of a twist. We can't stop him. We got to try. Six in the morning, police at my door. Can I shake it? Go, 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 go. My son, Michelangelo, I you have heart. Donatello, you have wisdom. Raphael, you have bravery. And Leonardo, honor. Enough talk! I dream about fighting every night. You've got a rage oh, problem, snap. right? It's not a problem! Can I shake you? All right, so that was the trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Um, let's see, reading from IMDb, the film follows the Turtle Brothers as they work to earn the love of New York City while facing down an army of mutants. Stephen Miller, what did you think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem? I had so much fun with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Um, and, and again, I, I don't have any deep abiding love of the source material, um, I, I'm sure, again, I watched something as a kid. I've probably seen the 1990 movie, but, like, it isn't something that strikes a nostalgic memory with me. It just, it feels so fun right from the get-go. It is um, not taking itself seriously at all. And it is different than, like, the Spider-Verse movies, which are, 
being whimsical in this kind of like grand extreme heightened way where they're still trying to say something like this movie is trying to be a Saturday morning cartoon. Basically, it is trying to feel small and episodic and make the stakes seem low, even when the bad guy seems really, really, really bad. Um, it's just a movie that's trying to like have fun and play with these characters. And just right off the jump, I thought it was great. I, I love the, the little prologue. I love how the creation or origin story of the turtles is treated as like a kind of a joke that jackie chan splinter just sort of yada 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 is over i think at one point he even says like and it happened to me and i was bigger than you so now i'm much older than you right and it makes perfect sense anyway moving on and like yeah. they, <laughs> it, it just has this kind of silly demeanor that is willing to poke fun at itself and i think what i really enjoyed about it is that the turtles are all genuinely just teenagers in in this movie like they are not adult crime fighting turtles who you are invested in as a kind of like cool superhero they are kids in high school or maybe even junior high i don't remember how old they're supposed to be who are just like figuring out their identity and they happen to be turtles and i think the fact that that is how it works makes all the pop culture references, all the things that, like, you could imagine a kind of shitty DreamWorks movie doing and it irritating me. Um, it works so well because you believe that these are just teenagers who are, like, fully absorbed in pop culture and are getting all of their ideas of who they want to be, what a hero looks like, what it means to be cool from television, from music, from, you know, browsing TikTok or something. And the whole movie just feels like a fun, loving play on what it means to be a teenager and how how it would feel to want to fit in, especially if you were a giant mutant turtle. Um, I think it is awesome that in a movie with just A-list voice actors, top to bottom, they decided to pick, as far as I can tell, four relative unknowns to play the actual turtles. Um, it, I think it's really cool that you get that kind of anonymity and room to let the character be the character and then you also have all the hilarious voice spots of like paul rudd as the uh gecko and seth rogan and john cena and jackie chan and you you get both in the same movie in a way that i think is really fun um iowa debris just having the best year ever i feel like <laughs> she's in so <laughs> many things and she's pretty much great in all of them uh, yeah. i really liked her as april o'neill here i think she just like the turtles are teenagers here i think her being a kind of awkward teenager who is hoping to become a broadcaster just is really fun and makes makes a lot of sense in the movie and i don't know visually i just thought it was great um there's a fight montage set to no diggity and we talked about the no sleep till brooklyn montage in guardians 3 um yeah. this put the same kind of big grin on my face i just had I love when a movie just calls a shot and it's like, hey, we're montaging now. Get used to it. Strap in. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, I think the visual style is cool. It After Spider-Verse, like nothing compares to Across the Multiverse in terms of the innovation and the dedication to every frame of that movie. But I do think visually this movie just looks very, very, very cool. I love the kind of green ooze the the mix of it kind of seems like 3d and rotoscoping mixed with some kind of like bright neon something splattered on it i have no idea how they did it but the look and feel is very 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 cool um, yeah and yeah i just i i had a lot of fun with this movie it's tight it's short left me with a big dumb grin on my face and i immediately texted our mutual friend saying that movie was awesome and then learned he didn't like it so <laughs> maybe i'm alone but i <laughs> I, I loved this movie. I thought it was a whole lot of fun. See, St Stephen, you could, should have kept your opinion down in the sewers. You can't just bring it out into the world. People are not going to accept it. <laughs> I know they're not going to they're not going to accept me for who I am. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with this film um, as well. You know, I, I I grew up consuming the turtles in various forms over the years. You know, I watched the cartoon when I was younger. Um, I had so many turtle action figures. There are four turtles. 
but I had like multiple of each one and they were all like hand me down from like other people. Like somebody, somebody spoiled their kid and bought them like every Ninja Turtle figurine ever and multiple of them, maybe because they were destroying them mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. And then they somehow got gifted to my family. And then we played the shit out of those little toys. We had like the, the, the pizza tanks, um, the, that little kick skateboard thing with like the foot that pops out of the front. Like we had all kinds of shit and like I played with them all the time. And I remember enjoying it, but I remember nothing about the lore other than that the turtles are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, and the funny thing about even knowing that much is, you know, when I was watching them as a kid, I was a kid as well. So teenagers were still like older than me, I guess, uh, depending on what yeah. age it was when I was consuming what version of them. So like, but but it wasn't until watching this film that I really thought of the teenage part of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as the the defining feature of them you know because before it was like they were ninja turtles you know like the teenage right. mutant part was always lopped off and we just referred to them as ninja turtles even though you know it was always TN tmnt but it was also ninja turtles and we just forgot about the fact that they were teenagers um and i really really like this sort of seeing this version of this origin story which it might have been the origin story for every other iteration ever but it felt novel in the moment where it's like yeah they had all learned the ninja stuff but they had literally mm -hmm. never deployed it ever before against anything. Yeah. It was all, it was all precaution of what if one day people found you, you got to be a ninja <laughs> to be able to survive if if humans saw you. But they had literally outside of like stealing groceries and toilet paper and stuff like that, they had never deployed their ninja skills in the wild on anything other than a practice dummy down in the sewers. And I really, really liked the idea of them going out into the world and not already being crime fighters, not already being wannabe heroes or anything like that just the idea of at one moment like the inciting incident for them to do their first heroic act is is like the least heroic thing in the world it's just right it's just like the way that plays is so fun and, and even just the the beats of the story that are, evolve around like are you being a hero for the right reasons like so many hero stories now are like you know with great power comes great responsibility and this is just like right what if uh just people like heroes <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. if we do that and having to learn to be a hero for the right reasons as opposed to just for the fame and acceptance that comes from that um so there's so much fun stuff to be had in this film um you know some of the you know the animation is is cool i liked it the stylized nature of it some of the uh action scenes are so chaotic that you can't really follow the action but it also mm. feels authentic to those characters because their lack of you know this isn't they're, they're not for uh teenage mutant ninja jason borns who are like yeah. really good at what they're doing they're just people who have learned all the moves <laughs> and now they're deploying them for the first time so the fact that that the nature and the choreography of those fights is so chaotic is kind of it, it kind of works in the moment because for them they don't know what the hell they're doing it's yeah, not they're, they're button mashing like they, yeah. <laughs> every individual move they can do but how to string them together like they have no idea yeah it's a hundred percent button mashing uh in in the film adaptation of like one of the best arcade games ever <laughs> yeah there was there was like the ninja turtles arcade game and then the simpsons arcade game that were always um like the quarter munchers uh but yeah i i mean i i think that the film not only is it fun not only is it is it clever you know it's kind of in conversation with the idea of what the turtles are this is a film that right people are it, it kind of is doing the thing that barbie does where where you know when it when it throws out this one thing that was actually a barbie toy it has to say like no this was a real thing you could buy at some point in time and this is kind of doing that too where like the logic of the background of the characters and what ooze does to different people like the characters comment on that as like they're calling attention to the fact that it's kind of weird um even though like nobody right, really like, talks why, about why was there a, a crocodile and a whale and a toad and a gecko in the you know in the sewers of new york <laughs> yeah yeah and there, there's like the a only hippo. thing they don't the only thing they don't comment on which it which i never really thought of until watching this film is the fact that like they all wear masks like they could be headbands but they're masks mm -hmm. but they don't have an identity because they're turtles <laughs> so it's not like it's <laughs> trying to hide who they are and i feel like that was the one thing the film didn't comment on is the, <laughs> the fact that there's there's nothing to hide so why do they need to cover yeah. their eyes um but yeah i, I, I you know I, yeah, yeah so where i was going with all that was I actually genuinely enjoy the story of this film. Like, you know, it's it's not just a clever, fun, action-packed, silly film. It's actually got a good 
hero story or, or the beginnings of a hero story, I should say, um, where you actually care about what's going to happen. And, you know, it, it is kind of doing, uh, was it the second X-Men film? <laughs> it's basically the exact same villain plot <laughs> as that. Um, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, it wasn't too I mean, big any, of a any story about mutants, it's going to happen eventually. Yeah, I know. But I, I just think it was like the exact villain plot of that of that film. Yeah. I just overall, I mean, so you are talking to a person who not only had Ninja Turtle action figures, I'm sure growing up, but even had Street Sharks action figures, the <laughs> the blatant ripoffs <laughs> of the Ninja Turtles. But I loved when I was a kid, the scary looking bad guys. That was like my favorite thing. I collected all of the different toys. I would always play with them. And I loved when it was like this scary looking riff of like a big animal with a person and they could like punch each other like i'm so into that <laughs> and so for me when superfly strolls up and he has his whole crew of like all the different mutants who i'm i'm sure they are all based on actual comic book characters or i don't even know what did this begin as a comic because i i know like there was a movie that was hugely popular early on and a toy series and comics and i, I don't know which one originated the turtles yeah i i don't know the 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 history there what, what came first um mm -hmm. the the turtles well, or the regardless Ooze, but <laughs> yeah re regardless i assume all of these characters are like canonical or coming from somewhere but yeah. just watching them all together had such a fun especially because when you're introduced to them it isn't just like oh, we're the bad guys, we're going to destroy you. Like, it, it's kind of like giving each of them a chance to introduce themselves. And it's like, we're hanging out, we're all mutants, we're cool, we're talking to each other. I just had a, I had such a, like, nine-year-old playing with action figures delight in just seeing like, oh my God, there's a hippo. What? What? That guy, he does that? Like, I, I just had so much fun watching it. And I love the voice acting. It's just so much fun. Like, that is really where they let all of the, you know, A-list voice actors just, like, have their pick of the litter and get to do wacky things. I love Paul yeah. Rudd as the gecko. Ice Cube being super fly is so much fun, especially because he's quoting, like, Ice-T songs. Um, <laughs> it, I, I don't know. It just felt like there was a meta element to a lot of what it was doing. And I loved it. I think the treatment of bad guys here is uh, is really well done. And it, um, I'm excited not to spoil where the movie goes, but I think a lot of those characters I will be seeing again in future movies, and that makes me happy because I... I had more fun with them when they're bantering with the turtles than when they're fighting with them. So I hope, I hope we get a chance of that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is like once, like the moment we meet them, like the idea that there's there that that the big bad, at least to the humans of this film, for the longest time, is a person whose identity nobody knows because they haven't actually really mm -hmm. seen him. Um, so when you get introduced to not just him but the entire crew all at once. And then, like, because of who the turtles are and their aspirations and what they mean, that chance meeting equals something wildly different than what they're planning for in that encounter. And kind of just the idea yeah. of the way that sort of flips the whole idea of, like, yeah, in a world where everyone is scared of humans, what happens when everybody in the scene is a non-human? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How is that going to play out versus what it would if it was just a normal bad guy doing something? Um, so I, I, I yeah. think I had a lot of fun um, with that. It also has a uh, a final boss that reminded me more than any movie I've ever seen of playing Shadow of the Colossus, <laughs> which I had a ton of fun with. Um, and it also has a thing that I love that, you know, Spider-Man has done and other movies have done, which is New Yorkers getting to come together and be New Yorkers and help the superhero achieve their goal. And I... yeah. I mean, it just gave me the fuzzies. I don't know. It, it's all low-hanging fruit. I'm not saying this is the most elevated, intelligent, clever riff on the turtles you could do, but it was just serving me softball after softball, and I loved every single one. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny that that New York thing works so much because, I mean, like, you know, I visited New York a few times. I've spent, spent, you know, like a total of maybe like 10 days there in my entire life. Um But uh, but it still it still works on me, even though I have no connection to the city for real. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, man, aren't those New Yorkers such good work together people? <laughs> yeah. Wish I could be back there doing Michael Imperioli impressions again. <laughs> like the last time we walked through New York. Uh, there's no proof. <laughs> there's no proof. Um, yeah, where to go? Where to go from here? <laughs> I don't know. It, it's funny because I feel like the story was very tight and I actually... 
I don't have a lot of plot details at the ready, which probably speaks to how simple the movie is. But while watching it, like you, I felt genuinely very gratified with the story. I felt like it it dug deeper than it needed to. I felt like it satisfied every beat in a good way. It set up all the turtles. It gets us ready for the next movie. Um, I, I was totally happy with it. But now I'm straining to remember what happened <laughs> other than jokes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, there are some there are some mini arcs in there. You know, you get like the 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 parent child dynamic thing in there. Mm-hmm. You get the uh, the like first crush sort of dynamics uh, thrown in there. Um, you get the you know inherent uh, you know like <laughs> like what does it take to become a leader amongst people that like you have a group like you get like the, that sort of like mini arc in there. Um, it's got it's yeah. got a little of little of everything. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Cool. Um, well, should we get to should we get to verdict, Stephen? Sure. Cool. All right. Well, Stephen Miller, if you're going to give us a must see, record with a caveat, wait for until past the caveat, or a must avoid, what would you give it? If I'm being critical, I would like round this a little bit down, just because it isn't like doing a whole lot. But I had so much fun with this movie. It was a must see. Like I, I was smiling wide when I left the theater. I was just high on this movie. I was so happy. My belly was full of uh, pickle and pepperoni pizza. I just watched turtles fight bad guys that made me want to play with street sharks again. Um, (laughs) I had a blast. I I hope all animated movies can be this playful and pack this much. Just like humor and sentiment and visual creativity into a short runtime. I feel like... If this is where superhero movies are headed, I'm happy. I'm, like, not tired of them anymore. So, yeah, must see. Small, but can't wait for them to do more. Yeah. Uh, Quick question on Street Sharks. Were they hockey playing sharks? Uh, Oh, they sure were. Okay. (laughs) At least one one of my action figures definitely had a hockey stick. Okay, because uh, like in my head, I'm imagining rollerblading sharks, and I'm like, why would sharks be rollerblading? And I was like, maybe they were playing hockey, but I, I can't remember. Yeah, they definitely at least one of them played street hockey for sure, because he had a hockey stick that I that I played with. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, I think this is a must see film uh, for me. Um, I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm excited for uh, the sequel where uh, they're they're bringing out a character that I is it a spoiler for a tease for another thing? Um, I think you can just spoil it if yeah, you want. Yeah, they're bringing out the shredder, uh, so <laughs> so that should be fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's it for a review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. Stephen Miller, if people want to find you throughout the week, where can they do that? Uh, people can find me at twitter.com slash sdavidmiller or sdavidmiller.com cool uh, people can find me at christopher in real life.com or <laughs> toots at I know I just said twitter I, yeah I backtracked <laughs> I said twitter uh, but uh, yeah that's where they can find me you can find the podcast over at the spoilerwarning.com where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show um, if you want to subscribe to the show you can do so on overcast apple podcast or wherever podcasts are found um i wrote it down so i could skip the, the other one <laughs> if you want to know the episodes go live you can follow us at twitter.com slash spoiler warning facebook.com slash the spoiler warning or instagram.com slash the spoiler warning if you want to get a hold of us directly you can send an email to fans at the spoiler warning.com or you can use the contact form on our site music for this episode will come from a track selected from artlist.io so hopefully you are enjoying that that music is playing now um we're gonna take off uh but it's good to be back and we'll be back uh, again soon with another episode so uh see you all shortly bye bye back when we were 17 